Congratulations on your purchase of an AT series paintball gun from Advanced Tactical Systems Incorporated. For your safety and the safety of others, please observe the following warnings. Your gun is not a toy. An adult supervision is required for anyone under 18 years of age to use this gun. Your gun can be considered a dangerous weapon if mishandled, abused, tampered with, or not operated according to instructions. Misuse or careless use may cause serious injury or death. Your gun may be dangerous up to 250 yards, and it is not intended to be fired at velocities higher than 300 feet per second, or at targets closer than 25 feet. As with any firearm, never point your gun toward anything that you do not intend to hit, regardless of whether the gun is unloaded, uncharged, or in safety. Any attempt to modify or service your gun other than what is authorized in this video or in the troubleshooting guide may cause your gun to malfunction or to become unsafe. Any unauthorized modification or service will void your warranty. Advanced Tactical Systems Incorporated assumes no liability for the resale or safe handling of its products, nor does ATS assume responsibility for personal or property injury resulting from the use of its products. There are three major sections of the AT series paintball guns. They are the gun, the clip, and the air source. The main features of the gun are the selector switch. The up position puts the gun in the fully automatic mode. The middle position covering the red dot is the safety position. And the down position is the semi-automatic mode. The clip release. Pull back on this to release the clip from the gun. The reset. A quick forward push with your thumb on the reset will cycle the internal components back to their starting position. This will often correct minor leaks and stalling. However, it is a good practice to drop the clip out of the gun before using the reset. This is because resetting the gun also loads another round into the gun. Even if a ball is already in the chamber, resetting will try to force another ball into the chamber. You can damage your clip and gun if you have a loaded clip in the gun when you reset. The forward loader release. Push up on this release and then push the forward loader ahead to release it from the fore end of the gun. The sight. The shortest blade is calibrated for 10 meters or 33 feet with the next higher blades calibrated to 15 meters, 20 meters, and 25 meters. The sight is easily removed by pulling it back off of the gun. The barrel and ball retainer. The barrel screws out of the gun and the ball retainer screws off of the barrel. The original version of the ball retainer comes in five different sizes and is made entirely of aluminum. If this is what is on your gun, you will need to find which ball retainer is best suited for the paintballs you will be using. The paintballs should require slight resistance to push through the retainer. The retainer is too large if paintballs fall through the retainer and too small if the paintballs become dented as you try to push them through the retainer. Very soon, we will be releasing an improved ball retainer called a unisizer. The insides will have flexible ribs which automatically adjust to the size of the paintballs being used. This improved version produces consistent velocities similar to our standard ball retainers, but allows you to use paintballs that vary in size without having to change to a different ball retainer. If this is the type of ball retainer that you have, you don't have to worry about size variations in the standard 68 caliber paintballs that you use. The coupling pin. This is used to release the gun subassemblies from each other when the gun is disassembled. Do not push on this pin except during disassembly. The regulator system. This is factory set and its function is to keep the incoming air source at a constant level. A scribed line on the screw is aligned with a line on the gun to show the proper setting. The regulator system is not an adjustment for the firing rate of the gun. The firing rate is fixed by the parameters of the gun's design and is confirmed by ATS to be between 10 and 12 shots per second in the automatic mode. Velocity adjustment. A velocity adjustment wrench is used to change the number of turns on the bolt assembly. The wrench is inserted into the barrel and connects to the bolt assembly. Clockwise turns will increase the velocity. Each gun's velocity is preset at ATS from between 240 and 260 feet per second. However, climate and altitude differences will affect the gun's velocity. 
The basic steps for getting started are power up, dry fire, and load. Power up consists of the following steps. As a precaution, remove the barrel and make sure that no ball is in the barrel. Then screw the barrel back on. Remove the clip. Put the selector switch in the safety position. Put a drop of ATS supplied oil on the tank O-ring to prevent damage to the O-ring when attaching the tank to the gun. Put four to five drops of the oil into the small hole inside the air source adapter. This keeps the gun seals lubricated. Screw the air source tank onto the gun. The gun should make one loud popping sound as the mechanical parts inside the gun are moved into place by the pressure from the air source. Then turn the tank another quarter turn to make a good seal. If you're using CO2 to power your gun, only fill the tank to about 80% capacity. For a 12 ounce tank, fill to 10 ounces. And for a 20 ounce tank, fill to 16 ounces. The gun is very efficient, so this won't limit your play. But anything over 80% of the CO2's tank capacity will likely freeze up the seals in the gun. The gun is now ready to dry fire, which means that the gun will be fired without using any paintballs. With the clip still removed and the selector switch in the semi-automatic position, point the gun upward in a safe direction and pull the trigger a couple of times. The gun should not make leaking sounds, but it is normal for air to escape out of a small hole in the rear of the gun with each round fired. Turn the selector switch to the automatic position and hold the trigger down for a moment. The gun should continue to fire as long as the trigger is held down. However, you should avoid dry firing of the gun for longer than a few seconds. Return the selector to the safety position. Next, take the clip and turn the crank pin clockwise only. The chain should move freely. When you feel the crank pin click into place, the clip is indexed. Warning, the clip must always be in one of the three indexed positions before loading it into the gun or your clip will be damaged. Insert the clip and make sure it is securely latched. Put the selector to the semi-automatic position and dry fire a few rounds. Watch to make sure that the lugs line up in the same position after each round is fired. This completes the dry firing test. The gun is now ready to be loaded with paintballs. Remove the forward magazine and notice that the loading gate is already open. Load no more than 60 paintballs into the magazine, then slide the gate shut. Overloading may cause the paintballs to become jammed in the magazine. Next, remove the clip and load paintballs into the clip. As the clip fills up, Turn the hand crank clockwise only to advance the paintballs toward the top of the clip. Stop when a ball gets directly under the chain lug that is visible at the top of the clip. With a selector switch in the safety position, load the clip into the gun. Then attach the forward magazine. The gate will automatically open to allow paintballs to roll into the clip. If the paintballs were loaded as described, your first shot will be a blank as a paintball gets loaded into the chamber and a second shot will result in a paintball being fired. Point the gun in a safe direction. Put the selector to semi-automatic and fire two shots to make sure that this happens. You are now ready to use your gun. This routine should become second nature to you, but the key points to remember are never power up the gun with the clip inserted. Always assure that the clip is properly indexed before inserting it into the gun. And always keep the selector switch in the safety position until you're prepared to fire the gun and put it back to safety after you've finished firing the gun. The AT series guns from Advanced Tactical Systems are unlike other paintball markers in a number of ways. We use a patented chain drive system to eliminate the need for gravity fed hoppers. We produce the guns in a professional manufacturing environment to assure that the components meet the print requirements and that production processes are followed. Because of the complex design and strict process controls, our guns rarely require the breakdown to the component levels that many users of our competitors' markers are used to. There are only a few preventive steps that you will need to perform to keep your gun in top working order. While many minor problems can be repaired by using our troubleshooting guide, all other problems simply cannot be fixed by the user without risking damage to the gun. Please call us at the number listed in the troubleshooting guide if you need help with your gun. The AT series gun is designed to perform reliably under a variety of conditions. However, if your gun does not perform as intended, we recommend that you refer to your troubleshooting guide if you are unsure of what the problem may be. Many times, 
A minor leak or misfire may simply require the gun to be reset and it will work fine. However, do not use the reset while the clip is in the gun. This could load another ball into the gun and damage either the clip or the gun. As you fire the gun, paintballs that are in the forward magazine should roll into the clip. Holding the gun slightly upward when not firing the gun will help to keep the clip filled. In some situations, a gentle forward and upward motion of the gun will help the paintballs to flow into the clip. When you have finished using the gun, dry fire it after removing the air source. This will remove pressure on the internal parts. If you don't do this, you also will not hear the loud pop the next time you power up the gun. These are the major components and assemblies of the AT series gun. Do not attempt to take any of the assemblies apart except as shown since damage can occur. Clip assembly. Rear housing assembly. Receiver assembly. Cog. Cog pull. Guide plate. Bolt assembly. Hammer assembly. Hammer spring. Sleeve barrel, ball retainer, grip, forward loader assembly. This is not available on the AT-10 series guns. Side assembly, regulator system, which consists of the regulator screw, regulator piston with O-ring, regulator spring, regulator sleeve, regulator sleeve O-ring, poppet, and poppet spring.